What's up guys, Brandon and Jeremy here from friendofrc.com. Today we're going to hit you up with our review of the Team Associated B44 buggy. So uh, we'll jump right into the technical specs and, and uh, as usual, well, I'll take the shell off here and let Brandon jump right in. Well, we bought this as the kit, so we did build it from scratch and I can say honestly, I got no complaints with this one. Really well engineered, you got basic, basic components, top plates, bottom plate, and that's it. The dry line goes through the middle. I mean, you got to work on it just a few minutes at a time. There's no, no real hard stuff, I'd say, in terms of skill level. If you're starting out, you'd probably be able to build this yourself if you had a little bit of help and patience. For those who have built a kit before, it's going to be no problem. Sure. And uh, the carbon fiber is a nice touch uh, in terms of, you know, I don't know if that goes to technical or durability, but, um, you know, you've got the threaded shocks, you've got the carbon fiber, you've got the blue adenized parts that uh, really, really help it pop and obviously add to the durability and lightness. Uh, nimbleness and we saw that on the track when we ran it for sure. Right, yeah. Um, other technical aspects. You will have to get the saddle packs. One, one downside I suppose, but at the same time that's what makes this thing handle so well. You get a perfectly balanced pack. Um, standard 10 scale system. You don't have to invest a whole lot of money into it. We're running, you can see the Sidewinder ESC just by happenstance what we had that day and this is just the standard Castle Mamba Max motor. I think it's a 5700 kV. Yeah, well definitely it's probably right, if you're inside you're going to want to run the Mamba Max Pro for sure, because you're going to have some heating issues with the ESC. Now, in terms of cost of operation, pretty darn cheap. I think the kit, very, very affordable. Now, if you're looking at the B44.1 now, uh, I definitely noticed a pretty steep price increase. Like, the kit, I thought, was very expensive for, for what it was. But in terms of durability, I don't have many complaints. We've put it through its paces. You know, um, the front, front bumper issue, a lot of people want to see a front bumper on here. Uh, but other than that, you know, I don't have a lot to say about it in terms of durability. Yeah, we're, that's, and that's a good thing. I mean, we we're, were pleasantly surprised. We bashed it in the winter time, and that's usually when you have the most problems, plastic getting brittle. You saw, if you see our video over at uh, RC Nightmare, we jumped it quite a few times, landed pretty hard on the nose, no issues at all. Had it probably four hours on the track, no problems there. So durability is really good. The 44.1, that gives you a few improvements, thicker carbon fiber on some of the shock towers and a few other upgrades. But Team Associated, they give you the list. If you want to upgrade to the 4.1 and save yourself money initially, you really, I don't think you'll miss out at all. You were seeing some people uh, when we were talking about fabricating their own bumpers. Uh, what is the material that uh, you were talking about? I can't remember. Well, yeah, we're going to use um, some Kydex plastic. That's a medical grade plastic that you see. Uh, BRP is a company that uses it a lot for bumpers. You can just buy a sheet of it for 20 bucks, cut out a bumper, bolt it on, you got yourself some more protection. A lot of the track guys are doing that, adding the bumpers. Okay, so that seems, yeah, that seems other than that, you know, in terms of upgrades, you know, it's like kind of up to you, right? How you want to, how it performs. I would say take it out of the box, see what you like, see what you don't, don't like. There's nothing out of the box that I thought, you know, you got to upgrade. Obviously, I would have liked to have seen some pre-cut wings, but I'm just lazy. I was <laughs> having some serious issues figuring out how the heck to even cut out a wing. So it was pretty embarrassing. Um, fun factor, it rocks. It's super fun. I think uh, both of us are really like, holy crap, this is way more fun than we thought. Like, you know, you, after coming from driving two-wheel drive buggies, they're kind of, unless mm -hmm. you're into racing, they're kind of underwhelming. But this thing just owns uh, with the Mamba system powering it. It's got power to spare and uh, just loads of fun. Yeah, I think we really underestimated the bashing factor. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not a bash truck by any means or buggy, but it did it and held up to it really well. Yeah, you're not going to be going through a lot of grass or going off-road with it, but if you got a groomed trail or a pavement or anything of that sort, you'll really enjoy it. But through and through, it's really a track truck, and that shows on the track. It does exceptionally well. Yeah, you make a good point. That's one thing I, I was going to mention. It's, it's, we bashed it, but it was winter time, right? So we had a lot of options in terms of uh, smooth, flat surfaces and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Onto the value, it's hard to really value a kit. I think it's strong value in terms of getting the threaded shocks, the carbon fiber, the price point you're picking up this kit at. Yeah, right. And you get the added value of just knowing your kit that much better and the experience you get from building it. Now, if you're not someone who likes to build, don't buy the kit. You're going to hate it then. You know, you'll hate any kit. But yeah, I liked it a lot. They, they do a really good job. Team Associated has great manuals for building it. The value aspect, if you're going to take it on the track, it, it's no doubt. I mean, you absolutely love it. Yeah, and then in terms of uh, you know, performance, it dominates, right? I mean, at the track, there wasn't a there wasn't an A scale buggy that could keep up, or a ten scale buggy. And A scale, surprisingly, buggies were having a big, a hard time. Now it's a smaller track. Certainly, with some longer straightaways, it probably would have made made up for the difference. But uh, it handles super smooth. It's very predictable in the air, mm -hmm. um, and it's just got the right amount of torque at the right amount of time. Seems like. Yeah, extremely like you said, extremely predictable in the air. 
balanced real well. You can just you can hit triples a little off, and you can still land them perfectly. We were chasing the tails of the ace scales all day. I had a ton of fun with it. Sure. Yeah, I think that was a, a lot of fun. So uh, we go Bill and Ted on this and jump in the phone booth. Do I go back and, and uh, get it again? Yeah, for sure. You know, I definitely I stick with the 44 if you can still get it, honestly. I don't see a heck of a lot of need to get the dot one. Now, there are cases like on the B4 that I think the value of going to the dot one makes a lot of sense. The 44, for some reason, the, the price difference is just too much for me. That's just my opinion. Yeah, and I would agree. And this is, we're going in the early June of 2011. By the time you, some of you guys are watching this, you probably won't be able to find the 144 kit. But if you can, great value. If not, you're not going to go wrong by getting the dot one. But yeah. I keep an eye out for it. I would definitely buy it again. Cool. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you have any questions, post them up down below. Stop over our website at friendofrc.com or join the conversation at rcnightmare.com. Thanks.